my dear brothers and sisters, do you notice something in my background? We have a new picture of Joseph, this time with his beloved betrothed wife, Mary. Why? Because we are entering into the second segment, another four weeks, of our fourth season on the person of Joseph as the ideal man that we propose for a Catholic father, husband, guardian of his family, just man and worker. So let us begin by listening to the Word of God that we will be reflecting upon in this 45th week of 52-week project. He made up his mind to do this when suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because she has conceived what is in her by the Holy Spirit. She will give him birth to a son, and you must name him Jesus, because he is the one who is to save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. Look, the virgin is with child and will give birth to a son whom they will call Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had told him to do. He took his wife to his home. He had not had intercourse with her when she gave birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. So we have heard this gospel text coming from Matthew that speaks about the dream of Joseph. Incidentally, the Holy Father, Pope Francis I, proclaimed a year of St. Joseph by writing us a wonderful apostolic letter. And this year spans from December 8 of 2020, the Immaculate Conception Solemnity, to the next solemnity <clears throat> of the same, in the, the same Annunciation of the Angel Gabriel to the Blessed Mother. Actually, Pope Francis is very fond, if not most devoted, to the person of Saint Joseph. Why? As you see in our slide, he dedicated his papacy to Saint Joseph on the 19th of March in 2013 upon his election that was in Rome. And when he went to the Philippines, in January 14, in his meeting with the families at the Mall of Asia Arena, he spoke about his devotion to Joseph with that famous statue now of the sleeping Saint Joseph where he said he brought it from Argentina to place every petition, every desire, every request that he would address to God under the intercession of this wonderful foster father of the Lord Jesus. What is the occasion of this jubilee year or year-long celebration of St. Joseph? It is the 150th anniversary of the letter of Pope Pius IX. He is now a blessed, who wrote in the 8th of December 1870, declaring Joseph as the patron of the Universal Church. So, that letter, Quemad Bodum Deus, is now sequeled by Patris Corde, by, with rather, a father's heart by Pope Francis. Before this dream of St. Joseph that we heard from the text of Scripture, there is first the event of the Annunciation, 
you realize that uh, the Immaculate Conception, the festivity of December 8th, is uh, what we have as a uh, timeline for the year of Joseph. Now, this Annunciation happened after the betrothal. And Mary, though she could not completely comprehend, but realizing that God indeed is calling her for a mission in life, something that she would make her virginity a real devotedness, complete dedication of herself to the mission of the Son of God who will become her son, born from her womb. It is in this occasion that after three months, having spent with Zechariah and Elizabeth in Judea, upon the return of Mary, Joseph realized there was something amiss. And what was amiss was that his betrothed wife is with child. And so as we have read it, it was already a decision that he had taken to divorce the Blessed Mother quietly <clears throat> when the angel came. And uh, it is in this dream that he had to face the situation of Mary and God asking him, because she is already the betrothed man, to man up, to man up, and accept Mary as his wife, taking him, her, to his own home, and naming the child Jesus. The Holy Father says in his Patris Cordis Corde letter, the nobility of Joseph's heart is such that what he learned from the law, he made dependent on charity. What should be the just thing to do? He did it in a loving way. So that today, in our world where psychological, verbal, physical violence towards women is so evident, Joseph is offered as the figure of a respectful and sensitive man. Look at that, brothers and sisters. Though Joseph did not understand the bigger picture, he takes the cudgels to make a decision to protect Mary's good name, losing even his own, her dignity and her own life. In that hesitation that lasted maybe several days or even weeks, in the hesitation, what is the best thing to do? God helped him by enlightening his judgment. And so the Holy Father continues in his letter that this example of St. Joseph of accepting Mary through and through made Joseph not just resigned to a situation, but rather it deepened the meaning of his relationship with the Blessed Virgin of Nazareth. He, it asked him to courageously and firmly become proactive of that situation. The Holy Father says, you know, in our lives, Acceptance and welcome can be an expression of the Spirit's gift of fortitude. Only the Lord can give us the strength to accept things in life as it is, in spite of contradictions, frustrations, and disappointments. So he said, Joseph to us, therefore, is a gift from the Father, giving us an example that it is possible in our own history to set aside anger, disappointments, and embrace things as they are, 
when they do not turn out as we wish. Not just my mere res resignation, but with hope and courage. God can make flowers spring up from a stony ground. For God is greater than our hearts. He knows everything. It did not mean an easy life, but it meant that they were doing the will of God. And God was with this couple. So here we encounter what Christian realism is all about. Rejecting nothing that exists. Rather, embracing everything. Because as St. Paul would say, and reminded to us by Pope Francis, we know that all things work together for the good of those who truly love God. And so Joseph did not look for shortcuts, but confronted with reality with open eyes, accepted the personal responsibility for it. Let us now listen to a life testimony of a man telling us in what way he has lived his life to this day, taking care of his children as they grow up in their years of maturity and accepting the life circumstances. No, no matter how hard, but always with a grateful spirit and a courageous heart. Good evening, everyone. The uh, title of my sharing is about Saint Joseph, my father and my guardian. I am Rene Saragossa and I hail from Cadiz City, Negros Occidental. I am the youngest of nine children to five girls and four boys, and I come from an average family. Being the youngest in the family, my parents decided to send me to Don Bosco Victorias for my high school education. I stayed in the dormitory of Don Bosco for four years. And during that time, I complained a lot that my parents put me in a school for boys and had to be away from them most of the time. Little did I know that my life in Don Bosco Victorias was part of God's plan in molding me to be the man I am today. Not only did I become a disciplined and orderly man, but he has planted a seed in me to become a prayerful person. For four years, all of us in the dormitory had to start our daily routine with a mass and to end the day with a rosary in the evening. Confessions can be done anytime, and we are encouraged to avail of this sacrament regularly. I embrace the importance of going to confession regularly and a devotion to Mary help of Christians. After high school, I went to Cebu to continue my college education. I attend Sunday masses regularly. However, I was not able to continue on with my devotion to Mother Mary. I pray the rosary only when it happens that I needed to pray for a personal special intention. After passing the board exams and due to limited work options, I went back home to our province. It was the time of Aquino's assassination wherein our economy suffered a downturn. Unemployment was on the rise. A friend introduced me to do a high ally business. They called it Masyao. At a young age, I was earning a lot of money, and I told myself, this is going to be the kind of life I want to have. My parents, especially my mother, was not happy about it. She was convincing me to give it up, and I find and to find a regular job. Out of obedience, I went back to Manila and was accepted as an aircraft maintenance trainee of Philippine Airlines for two years. I don't have a salary, but they give me an allowance. Even if I am already a licensed engineer, since I was just a trainee and a provinciano, 
I have to do the odd jobs most of the time. It is my responsibility to collect money and buy the merienda of some of the mechanics every day. It was a humbling experience knowing that prior to this, I am already earning a lot of money in the province. I feel like going back home, but I know St. Joseph has been my guide and he influenced me to stay humble and just do my best in my job no matter what. Fast forward, I am now the department head of the technical services of Lufthansa Technic Philippines. I rose to the rank of this position from just being a trainee. Some of my former superiors became under me, but I see to it that I still address them like I used to. I still call them sir. I, I told them that no matter what, I will not change how I address them like I used to. St. Joseph, the worker, as my model, do his job well without complaints and continue to master his craft. While I was in Philippine Airlines, one Friday, a friend of mine invited me to attend a prayer meeting of Ang Lingkod ng Panginoon, a Catholic organization of young professionals. I was hesitant at first to join them, but after meeting the brothers and sisters and have experienced how they relate to one another, how they love the Lord and make Him their priority, it made an impact on me. I became a regular attendee every week. And I was thankful to be part of this group because I became more closer to the Lord in a personal way. My devotion to Mother Mary was renewed. I prayed the daily rosary again. And to this day, I still have my rosary in my pocket all the time. I also became more prayerful and I added more devotions like the three o'clock prayer habit. In Lincoln, this is where I met my wife, Carmina, an only child. She is a prayerful person, and she informed me that before we got married, she has been praying to St. Joseph for a husband in the image and likeness of him. Her family is very active in their parish, St. Joseph the Worker. And their entire family have been and are part of various church organizations. Nakakatuwa po na... Kami ay uh, pinagtagpo ng Panginoon, isang malaki at maliit na pamilya, bunso at nag-iisang anak, taga Bacolod ako at siya naman ay taga Maynila. But our common denominator is our faith. Milestones in the family are always celebrated. My wife is a good cook and she always prepare for our food every day. We don't only have good food during birthdays, but we celebrate birthday in the family with honoring and praying over. This is our way of life in Ligaya ng Panginoon community where our family is a part of. I am sharing this because my wife would always mention in her honoring to me that I am a prayerful husband. Saint Joseph has been my model with this faith and in being prayerful. She shared to me that the important qualities she was looking for in a husband that is non-negotiable, is a God-fearing man because everything follows when a person is always praying. She is confident that with these two qualities, that person is a just man and would follow the Lord in every way. We are thankful how the Lord has brought us together. Before we got married, it is clear to us that we wanted to form a family deeply rooted with the Lord. Our family motto is from Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The next part of my sharing is how I look up to St. Joseph to be my model as a loving father. This year, Pope Francis declared it as a year dedicated to St. Joseph through his apostolic letter, Patris Cordy, with a father's heart. I am so grateful that through the years, I experienced how he guided me to lead my family to Christ. Before we got married, me and Carmina discussed the possibility that if the Lord that does not give us our own child, it will not affect our relationship, but will be open to other options. It took six years before Carmina conceived. She went to see several doctors, went through different workups, until 
we were exhausted, drained not only financially, but more so you know, emotionally. I witnessed how she would cry every time a procedure done to her was not successful. It came to a point that she was questioning the Lord and doesn't like to pray anymore. On my end, I just prayed silently, interceding for her and our heart's desire. I did not question the Lord because having an own child doesn't define my love and commitment to my wife. I was at peace with a turn of events because I have to accept and be obedient to God's will for our life. Lo and behold, the Lord blessed us with two beautiful children. Our eldest, Hannah, is now first year college taking an up architecture in College of St. Benil. And prior to that, she had 13 years in St. Scholastica's Manila. Our son Miguel is grade 10 in Don Bosco, Makati. Part of our decision as a couple is for us to send our children to Catholic schools. I love my children very much and I see to it that I treat them equally. They are my inspiration to continue working hard in order to provide them a good future. But more than providing them materially, my main priority is their spiritual life. As mentioned earlier, we are part of a Catholic community and we are grateful for the regular teachings for their spiritual support. They have programs for the youth for their own formations. However, with this lockdown, there are now limitations. And together with my wife, we came up with ways to strengthen our family faith formation. Aside from praying the daily rosary as a family, we go to mass together as a family virtually. It brings us closer and creates a stronger bond with everyone in the family. The first time our children actually went out of the house, the first thing we asked them to do was to go to St. Joseph Parish Church to attend mass and receive Holy Communion before we even allow them to eat with us as a family. This was last December 8th. And we have been attending Sunday Masses in St. Joseph Parish Church since then. It's good to receive the Lord sacramentally, and it is important to receive God grace, God's grace as a family. To bring them more closer to the Lord at this time of lockdown, we also came up with a weekly family Bible sharing or Bible study. We will check the gospel for the next Sunday and come up with reflection guides. Why did we decide to come up with one? Most of the time, they are using their gadgets. We don't know if during the Mass, they absorb the Sunday Gospel. So we wanted them to be prepared in understanding the Word of God. And prior to our personal sharing, we also have a family prayer, and we allow them to say their own personal prayer of thanksgiving. We are also training our son to lead us as a way of building his confidence. This is one of our family tradition of togetherness. As parents, we should assume full responsibility for the growth and development of our children. They are God's gift to us, and we should be good stewards to take good care of them. As a husband and father, like Saint Joseph, I am the guardian and protector of my family in all aspects, physically, morally, emotionally, and spiritually. I have two great models, mentors in my vocation as a husband and a father. They serve as my guide and my companion in my journey to live a life pleasing to the Lord. They are St. John Bosco and St. Joseph. My favorite quote of Don Bosco, which I keep in my heart is, do your ordinary duties extraordinarily well. And I believe that St. John Bosco's model here was also St. Joseph. As a husband and father, we should emulate St. Joseph as a silent intercessor, faithful to God, and always placing everything at God's disposal. Let us make St. Joseph our spiritual father and guide. For those who still doesn't know this extraordinary man, May St. Joseph, who is the head of the Holy Family, influence our lives. Let us take advantage to get to know him more this year, to imitate his own piat and allow God's grace 
to overflow in our hearts. To end, may I quote Pope Francis when he said, 2021 is dedicated to St. Joseph in honor of the 150th anniversary of the saint's proclamation as patron of the Universal Church. Every member of the faithful following his example may strengthen their life of faith daily in the complete fulfillment of God's will. Lastly, I would like to thank you, Father Francis, for giving me this opportunity to proclaim who Saint Joseph is to me, and to all of you for taking this time to listen to my sharing. To God be the glory. Amen.